His Eminence Thomas Cardinal Collins is one of only 16 people in all of Canadian history to be appointed by the Pope to the College of Cardinals. It's quite a journey for a young boy who in grade 11 was challenged by his high school teacher to consider the priesthood. Since then, his studies have taken him through multiple degrees in arts and theology and seminaries from St. Jerome's in Waterloo all the way to Rome. He was appointed the Archbishop of Edmonton before being appointed that role in Toronto and now to the College of Cardinals, Your Eminence. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Wow, what a journey for you. Yes, indeed, <laughs> it is. And now you serve in this global position right. for the world's largest non-governmental social agency, schools, hospitals, mm -hmm. all around the globe, and yet an agency which is so poorly appreciated by, by culture, mm -hmm. by society. What does that say about us as a society? Well, I think people always, uh, have different views of the Catholic Church. They usually see it as this big monolith, this big whatever. And uh, that we have 2,000 years of history, and so we have uh, lots of uh, troubles in the past, lots of things. We have about two, uh, it's about over a billion members. So you're always gonna have a whole complex reality there. It's quite a remarkable uh, community. Uh, and so uh, it's true, I think, in our, especially in an increasingly secularized world, uh, people tend to be sometimes uh, very uh, negative about the church. Uh, and yet, uh, it is really something that is a remarkable reality. It's a community of extraordinary diversity and of, of a great deal of faith, hope, and love. And yet, there's great optimism. The church is growing here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. It's um, building a new church every year. Mm -hmm. Why are people being attracted to the Catholic Church? Well, I think that uh, certainly one element in, in Toronto is immigration. We have people come from around the world, and many of them are Catholics, and so that affects to some degree the, the Catholic population. But I think there's just a tremendous energy. Uh, just uh, uh, yesterday I was out, at our, uh, out in Oshawa at the university campus there in a big uh, gymnasium with about 1,500 uh, young people filled with tremendous joy and energy. We were hearing confessions for an hour and a half, 30 of us priests and a big down the hall from there. Uh, and uh, the young people deeply presenting their life to Christ. And that had been going on for a couple of days. I just came for the last two days. We have it's to talk amazing. about confession, because that's a different model for me to look at. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, 1,500 kids through a high school gymnasium. Yeah. Why is confession important? Oh, it's glorious. It's a chance to just come, like you know, the experience of Christ in the, in, you know, the New Testament, walking along and people come and say, you know, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. And then the Lord saying to people, go in peace, your sins are forgiven. And that experience we can experience ourselves uh, because of the great gift of the sacrament of confession, reconciliation, we call it different names. And it was just so beautiful. I'd be there and we'd have like this enormous gym and you'd have, we actually saw air traffic controllers, some of the young people organizing, pointing, go here, as the, as the young people come from one priest to, to this priest and that priest. And I'd be hearing for, again, for an hour and a half, people really pouring out their hearts. For one thing, it is a chance to just come before the Lord in a spirit of trust and of love. And also just to say, here I am, Lord, give me the mercy and forgiveness. And I think of all the things I do as a priest, um, celebrating the Holy Eucharist, of course, is at the center, but really that moment when in the name of Christ, I you know, say the, the, really the words of absolution, which is really Christ, I, you know, I absolve you from your sins, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, is an extension of the beauty of baptism into the present struggle of life. And uh, it's hard to, it's just astonishing. And I find that myself in, in my life as a priest, I just find it so enriching. But as a penitent too, just shortly before that, I'd gone to confession myself. And um, I, I just find it the most sublime experience. Other factors of the faith that are attracting people to staying in the church. Well, I noticed one of the things, uh, just talking with the, the young people, uh, but I, I've noticed it in other, other areas too. And for example, we have a group called 808, which meets at a small chapel at the, uh, um, at the, the cathedral. Um, the, the number 808 was uh, the apartment number of somebody who kind of organized it originally. And what we do is we have uh, half an hour of adoration before our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament, then we have Mass, and then we have a party. We have some time, some social time together. And I think that uh, Pope Emeritus, Pope Benedict, 
expressed it well when he talked at the funeral. He sent a message at the funeral of Cardinal Meister. He was a very holy cardinal. He a lot of, you know, he did all the controversies in the church. And he said the two things sustained him in hope and gave him great joy in his final years. One of them was the, the tremendous importance of adoration for the young people. And secondly was the sacrament of confession, especially for young people, especially young men, he said. And I think that's true. Uh, but especially adoration, this sense of coming before the Lord, our Eucharistic Lord, in a moment of silence. This world is so noisy, so busy. Just say, my Lord and my God. And that touches the hearts of old and young, and it certainly touches the hearts of young people. I saw it in this huge uh, gymnasium just, uh, just yesterday or two days ago. Uh, um, the, the adoration, the silence, the love, going beyond ourselves to the presence of God. It's a very significant role the Catholic Church has been incredibly present about, is that by our, by our structures, by our rhythms, by our orthodoxy, we will help you pause and reflect yes. on Jesus. Yeah. You've also leveraged that presence to say, we want to help society think about God. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your recent letter to the Prime Minister of Canada. You did not appreciate that Canadian tax dollars were being used to fund abortions in developing countries. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church is the largest relief and development agency aside yes. from governments. Mm -hmm. In the world. Did you get an answer from the Prime Minister? I got uh, an answer, I got a couple of answers from uh, point, pointing me to the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the, the cabinet minister responsible for that. And so we, we had various things that way from, uh, from his office pointing me to those. So uh, there was an answer, but it was a very, uh, basically s doubling down on what they're doing. You so know. you have said in that letter to the prime minister, lovely tweet in there, we have no rights at all if we have not the right to life. It is the fundamental. And I find it, apart from the fact that I think this is a, a just a misguided thing to do, it's a misguided approach to life to try to think you're really helping people by uh, really an attack on the gift of life itself. I think there's a cultural arrogance that is jaw-dropping and <laughs> that is astonishing where Rich, and this is true not only of governments, but of uh, big wealthy uh, people who, foundations and things like that, sending all this cash to export to other countries what they perceive to be a rather superior view of how to do things. And I think that's arrogance to that. I'm not saying the Prime Minister's arrogance, so I'm saying that the whole approach is rather condescending to other cultures. All right, we have another very big issue in Canada when we come back with this interview, and that is the rush to embrace euthanasia in this country. We're gonna talk about your fight for conscience rights and the sanctity of life when we come back after this.